likely not actually talenting for Cyclone and focusing more on just healing outputs and avoiding crowd control and staying far away from the fight. Iroh, Nux leading the charge, actually going after Dole Gang Swag earlier on. Iroh trying to bait them around the corner. Lisora going for a double stun lock. Grounding Totem for that freezing trap. Well played by Iroh. Yeah, those ground and terms are going to stop with those freezing traps, but Iroh in a lot of trouble already. The Beast Wrath, Avatar, and Warbreaker coming out. So a huge offensive goes, a uh, huge offensive pressure right now from Give It onto Iroh, but they didn't even proc the ethereal form. And like you said, said that's going to immune a lot of damage. All right, it does appear to be the Warrior as the primary target for both teams at this point. They don't really care about the lack of defensive stance. Curious to see who ends up going down first. Gossing actually playing the Wild Charge, jumping into Bash Iro. Look for these. Volchuk may have shadow melded the Stormbolt there. I believe he's able to avoid it and dodge the freezing trap as a result. Gronks have great defense initially, breaking up two crowd control chains already. Yeah, Gronks are playing this very smart, in my opinion. They're just choosing to go on that warrior play defensively, and then nearly taking Dole Gang Swag already. The Iron Bark and Thorns come out, as well as the uh... Red and Cray. Might just die through the die by the sword now as well. Huge defensive overlaps right now, all because they didn't use it earlier. The only thing I didn't really like from that exchange is that Nux committed his intimidating shout on Gossing during a moment where it was very unlikely that Dole Gang Swag was going to go down. I think Nux was better off saving that for the next crowd control chain. Now Gossing doesn't have to worry about that threat. It's going to give him a moment to breathe through the rest of this sustained pressure. Disarm on Nux, find more time for Give It to recover, but most of this match has been completely in favor of Gronks. They're getting really nice outplays on the crowd control chains, breaking it up and dealing tons of counter pressure, forcing defensive overlaps, and Gronks are looking well-rounded. Volchok into the Stormbolt, Iroh getting in position to potentially grounding another oh. freezing trap. Great teamwork between Iro and Volchok. Iro playing with these defensive honor talents, the grounding tome and the ethereal form. It's just going to be a brick wall for Give It to break. And I feel like this will come down to mana, which Volchok is behind on. Nux also taking quite a lot of damage. Gowsing coming in for a bash right now. Full fear on the Volchok, but it gets tremored. So that allows Volchok to iron bug Nux, and he should be okay for now. Yeah, that disarm onto Dole Gang Swag should stall out the damage long enough for Volchok to recover. Dole Gang Swag, though, overextending, look for a double stun lock. Finally, a freezing trap secured, but I believe it was War Bannered by Nux. Great War Banner, breaking up another crowd control chain from the team of Give It. Gronks on fire defensively, showing that they can both play aggressively and defensively in the current meta. Nux getting disarmed on his avatar, very well placed by Dole Gang Swag, slowing down some of the pressure. Counter shot onto Volchok. Not really enough to force the ethereal form, or at least unlikely. Iroh retreating away. Tranquility from Volchok stacking up more heal over time effects. Here comes a freezing trap. Iroh's grounding totem was one second too late there. Finally, some of the defense is starting to crack for the Gronks. He had to use that ethereal form since the grounding totem wasn't timed enough to get that freezing trap, but that ethereal form is going to make him immune. My only problem, Sid, is that if they're playing this too defensively, I'm not sure if they're going to have enough pressure to force give it defensively and to win on mana, which could be a huge downfall for them. But Ira getting bashed up really low on HP. The Iron Buck has to come out from Voltruck there. And it also the Trinket as well. He could ground in this trap. The Stormbolt is out on Voltruck, so I would love to see that. Yes, another beautiful grounded time coming out from Ira. Yeah, their defense has been great, but like you said, their pressure has been lacking since that big moment earlier in the match where they forced multiple defensive cooldowns. They haven't really shown any signs of life since then. Iro is falling behind. Volchok is running out of mana. Full intimidating shout gets tremored by Iro. Good support, breaking his healer out of that crowd control, trying to stabilize with Dolgang jumping into battle stance, boosting his damage. Iro able to duck around out of line of sight. Volchok into the Stormbolt grounding totem available, but unfortunately missed by one second. This could be an ethereal forced out. Ira just mashing out those healing surges to sustain himself. Now trying to catch Dole Gang Swag behind the pillar with that sundering. Tons of burst. Good bait by Iro. Tons of pressure and he's just going to take him out. Well played by Iro putting Dole Gang Swag into a bad position and completely punishing him in those final moments. 200 IQ play coming in from Iro there, bringing the Grog Strike first blood as they are 1-0 in the series. Give it looking to bounce back on Ashermans. Yeah, and Give it will need to 
give better defensive cooldown usage if they need to survive, and then they might be able to take this because I feel like Gronks may be playing too defensively. Having the grounding and the ethereal makes him lose out on some damage. And right now, give it I having an explosive start once again with the double stuns coming out, huge burst pressure onto Iro. But it wasn't even the beast true rough, it was just that wall breaker pressure from Dole Gang Swang, forcing the iron bark and the thorns as well. Iro popping their ascenders, trying to get some counting pressure. But it looks like if both druids are free, they're gonna keep their teams alive. This is Descendants from Iro. This is a big boost of damage on a three-minute cooldown. If they don't force major defensives, it's going to be devastating. And it looks like Gossing was able to handle the pressure, not even having to trade Iron Bark. Give it are going to get a significant lead to play aggressive now in this position. Iro is likely to have to constantly retreat away. He's staying next to Volchok in range for Grounding Totem on Freezing Trap. We have to wait to see when Dole Gang Swag wants to commit that Storm Bolt. Lee Sora in center field moving forward. It looks like they're getting primed and ready for this Storm Bolt. Iroh with Grounding Totem down to deny it. They need to kill that off. They land a double Intimidating Shout, but fortunately breaking to the damage. Tremor will break Volchok out of that crowd control chain. Lee Sora still moving forward. He might look for a Freezing Trap off of thin air to try and get some extra burst damage here. Even without it, Iroh is under fire. Intimidation stun holding him in place. Volchok taking a quick breather to recover through that burst. It looks like both teams are kind of playing defensively. Iroh not trying to push in. He wants to be by those pillars in case he needs to line of sight. He wants to be in range of the ground in time all the time on those freezing traps. Whereas Lee Sora as well, he's struggling to really push in. He doesn't want to overextend and be vulnerable to a swap. But it looks like he's trying to get aggressive now, maybe knowing that he needs Ooh, that to shadow try and meld. stay on top of Volchok to get those traps. That shadow meld on the storm bolt. Volchok is ready to take this series now sitting in stealth and maybe even trying to go for a drink i would like to see Volchok go for more drinks because mana was not in his favor for most of that last match trading ethereal to get a full mana bar seems like a fair trade to me lisora under fire now as gronks are changing targets trying to catch gossing off guard and burn more mana by having to heal multiple targets that's a nice move that's going to tie up the mana moving forward yeah, and Gronks are doing an excellent job with that offensive play, knowing that when Lee Sora pushes in, they need to punish that, they need to target him, get some cleave pressure on him, and make sure he can't stay offensive now. Full fail on the Gozing, but it's not really going to force too much, although it did force the trinket out of Lee Sora. They're getting pressure onto Dolgang Swag right now, but at the same time, Iro taking some heat. All right, Volchok trying to heal through the pressure. This isn't even any offensive cooldowns from Give It, and they've got Iro on the ropes. No grounding totem. Unfortunately, they killed it off right before landing that. That's great crowd control from Give It, putting Iro even more behind. This could easily be ethereal form. Volchok is trying to hold on to it, be greedy, but it might cost him his life. He's trying to get out of line of sight, kite away from the pets and avoid the damage. Iro chilling behind the pillar. Gossing in the meantime, maybe looking for a drink. I love that he took the opportunity when his team had aggressive pressure to go for a drink. That is some high level healer decision making by Gossing. That gets his team a massive lead. It seems like both teams are trying to out survive the other. And right now, give it, like you said, Sid, taking that massive lead, getting that drink and holding on to those defensive cooldowns. And Volcher gonna have that iron bark very soon. They're looking for those traps once again. I believe that it actually lands or it nearly got grounded, but unable to get it now. Full fear as well. But Ira is gonna break that with the tremor, which is a nice advantage to have with the shaman. All right, ascendance popped. Iro needs to get work done with this. Either get a kill or force a lot of major defensives. And so far, it's not looking too good. He's actually the one on the back foot, caught in center field from that vortex of Gossing. Stun locked. He pre ethereal the stun, though. Well played from Iro. Volchok trading that ethereal form to drink and get full mana almost. It's a nice play from the Gronks moving into the late game. That Ethereum is paying its weight worth and go just allowed to sit in that immune every single ounce of damage coming up from this KFC and allow him to drink, but at the same time, Nux getting low. Voltrox ended up having to use his trinket there to keep him alive but no defensive cooldowns really used right now. Dolgang also taking a lot of pressure. There's the fail on the Gelsing, but he pre high embarks it. An excellent play coming out from him on that Resto Druid. Yep, top-notch level play from the number one seed of Korea, Give It, and the number one seed from Australia, New Zealand, Gronks. These two teams are the best of their perspective regions, and they are really showcasing it here today. Dolgang Swag on the back foot, as well as Iro with a counter shot secured. Really want to see if Iro can successfully grounding totem the next freezing trap. If he is is unable to, and Intimidation is available. It's very unlikely that he survives. Here's the Storm Bolt. Lee Sora needs to land it. They've secured it, but War Banner from Nux. MVP play, reducing that incoming crowd control. 
Gronks now surviving that attack are looking to get aggressive. This is why I like to see from Gronks Iro just add that pillar ready to line of sight and kite as soon as needed. But at the same time, this gives Give it an opportunity. Gozing just abusing the fact that they play so defensively to get these drinks, and then that, that could just backfire for them, Sid. They're switching targets, trying to catch Volchok off guard and spend more mana. Switching targets against the Resto Druid is a great strategy. If you attack the target without Life Bloom, which is the most powerful heal over time effect from a Druid, he has to restack it on a different target. And if you switch during crowd control, he's not going to have that heal over time effect. So great strategy execution from both teams against this Restoration Druid. Nux trying to get some pressure with this blade storm onto Dolgang. Now Dolgang reversing it with sweeping strikes. He's going to be doing a lot more damage with two targets stacked up. Volchok very low on mana. Gossing oh. going nice shadow meld again. Volchok's shadow melds in this series are definitely MVP. He's been on fire with that shadow meld binding for sure. Getting immune in those stuns. So that's an excellent job. And now full fill on the Gossing again. But they're unable to get too much pressure. Lisora just trinkets out of that. Starts jumping away. It looks like he'll be able to kite and survive for now. But a, a Hex also Followed up onto Gosling. Excellent Kyan from Lisora there. Lisora trying to flare out Volchok as he was going for a drink, and he actually managed to get a mana lead moving deeper into dampening. It's going to be a risky gamble to go for more drinks into the late game, and that is going to allow Gronks a lot more breathing room. Dolgang swag on the back foot, but they are leading the charge with a double stun combination. Grounding totem already used, and unlikely that Lisora will be able to secure a freezing trap, which will mean that Iro can now get aggressive in their face and start to force this mana lead even further. Nux getting swapped too. Give it trying to throw Volchok off by switching targets. And Nux does not have that ethereal form, that low cooldown defense. So if they make a swap and catch him in a stun, he could easily fall. Gossing into the Storm Bolt as Nux is trying to get some pressure with this blade storm. Iro committing that ascendance. Once again, his first two ascendants in this game have done basically nothing. And this third ascendance is looking to do the same. He gets shut down by Dolgang Swag. And these ascendances have not been high value, Joe. They haven't indeed, and it's very, very unfortunate for them because Golsing's just been able to outheat, although he is getting lower mana, he needs to drink, but at the same time, Ira's just playing so defensively, he really doesn't want to die. And these drinks from Golsing could just put them on the back for Voldrick having to use that iron bark right now as well. When it's a 2v3 situation, it just feels like Dolgang Swag and Lee Sora are able to just do a crazy amount of damage and CC by themselves. Again, Ira is super low. Surely the Ethereal has to come out the trap comes out, he gets stunned on it, but he does get that tremor off just before. That stun was one second faster. That could have easily been Volchok's trinket. And now Volchok is on the ropes as Gossing was able to get a drink during that aggressive pressure. So basically, whenever Givet's team has momentum, such as this with Iroh low health, Gossing sneaks away and gets a drink, knowing that the enemy team can't push forward and deny that mana regeneration. And it's very good awareness, and it's allowed his team to have a significant edge now moving into the late game. Iroh in almost an unrecoverable position. If this freezing trap lands, no, Iroh denies it. Great teamwork between the two, but they are inevitably falling behind on mana if they don't get a kill soon. Iro dipping into execute range. He's trying to be greedy and hold on to that ethereal form. They need to hold on to it and trade it for a drink on Volchok. Volchok going for an aggressive play, bashing up Gossing, trying to create a window of opportunity, but it's Iro that's still on the back foot, forced to trade out that vital ethereal form. There's a 24 second window where Iro has basically no defense to stay alive. Dampening is ramped up very high at this point, and Volchok Volchok is on the ropes. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to keep this going. Mashing out those regrows. The next Storm Bolt could close this out. Waiting. There's the Storm Bolt. Shadow Meld. No, he doesn't able to Shadow Meld it. That's going to... Oh, the Freezing Trap as well, but it gets war bannered by Nux as they do everything they can to keep Iro going, but it's not enough. And this was likely going to be the result of game number one if Givet had extended the game as they did in game number two. And I think we're going to see Gronk start to make some composition changes. They yep. need this victory. They do really need this. And I can't help but feel like losing maybe even the grounding or the ethereal for a ride the lightning or fork lightning will have give them a lot more extra damage and be able to slay give it but we'll have to see if the smaller map helps them connect maybe more onto lisora stop gousing from drinking and then they may be able to take it in those terms dull gang swag getting a double blade storm there onto both nux and iro Lisora looking to secure crowd control, not able to land it. Volchok playing Wild Charge, jumping to his ally right before the Freezing Trap landed. Volchok has been doing great avoidance plays as far as these Freezing Traps are concerned. And the defense of Gronks is almost perfect, really. It's aggression that they are lacking in this series. The sustained damage of Givet is going to overwhelm them into the late game unless they find some opportunities. They could do what they did in game one, where they bait Boat bait, Dole Gang Swag behind the pillar and try and burst him down with Ascendance, which looks to be the strategy so far.
Yeah, I would love to see that. One thing to note as well, Voltrek was doing an excellent job hibernating that Basilisk to completely negate that. So once again, I have to commend both of these Druids playing excellent defensively. And it's up to either Grox or Give it to get that offensive pressure, get those kill opportunities and win them the game. All right, Iro committing the Ascendance and getting absolutely nothing done with it. That was the avatar of Nux as well. This is a devastating decision by Gronks to commit those aggressive cooldowns and get no pressure or defense forced from Givet. I could see a game where they bait Dual Gang Swag out of line of sight, Stormbolt and disarm him and deny his side by the sword and burst him. That's definitely one option as a win condition, but they're just not implementing it. They're playing this slow, passive, constant damage game, which is playing into the hands of Givet. One thing that Dolgang Swag just did incredibly well right there is during the travel time of the trap to Volchok, as soon as the grounding was down, he was ready and destroyed it before he could even get the trap. And that just completely puts the grounding to waste and puts Iroh on that defensive back foot. And once again, give it a having all this offensive momentum. But right now, Lee Sora actually getting super low right now. They need to be careful there. And he actually ends up using the toe and the iron bark. And all of a sudden, this defensive momentum has swapped. Yep, the map pick was a great choice by Gronks. If they play defensive around those boxes, they can bait their opponents in, and when they're stacked up, they can make swaps, which is the perfect strategy against the Restoration Druid to switch targets rapidly and try and get ahead of the heal over time effects, and that swap to Lisora banked them some major defensive cooldowns, which means in another minute and 30 seconds, Ira will have Ascendance, and he needs to try and bait Lisora into a bad position and burst him down. It's going to be up to Gosling and Lisora to be aware of this and not overextend into that position and play into the hands of the Gronks. Mana tied at this point. We see a Stormbolt freezing trap attempt actually going for the Intimidating Shout first and getting a freezing trap out of it. Iro now on the run, ducking for cover, but Lee Sora is slowly getting baited closer to the boxes, which is exactly where the Gronks want him. Exactly. They're trying to just bait him behind that pillar so that they can hit him, but Lee Sora, knowing he doesn't have that aspect of the total safety net anymore, he really doesn't want to do that, but Iro taking some heat right now as well, getting chunked down by Dolgang Swag, just on top of them both constantly doing a lot of pressure but now the full fear on the goes and the storm onto Lee Sora. This is where they want to win. I would have loved to seen the ascendants being used here, but he doesn't have it just yet. He's going to have that soon. They force the iron bark though, and that's another major defensive cooldown. Yeah, and that window now where ascendants will be available and iron bark will not. So it does create an opening. That was a great setup by Gronks. I still can't help but feel that Volchok should be playing Cyclone. They could be doing those crowd control attempts even in the window where Nux's Intimidating Shout isn't available and they could be forcing a lot more cooldowns and inevitably get a kill. We see the Stormbolt onto Gossing. Dolgang Swag's just going to heroic leap back up to safety. Nux not able to pursue, getting Ursul Vortex down, trying to go for the charge and get back on target. Volchok sitting down for a drink, which is a nice move. Moving into the late game, as this is likely to be, he can secure a mana lead. Caught into a Stormbolt. Iro looking to back up and break this, but he doesn't actually go for the grounding totem. Iro in a 2v3 situation, trying to kite and doing an effective job so far. Trading the ethereal form, Gossing actually getting a drink amidst all of that pressure, bringing this game to a tied point once again. Indeed it is to a time point, and it seems like every time Vulture goes for a drink, Gossing goes for the drink as well, and it looks like there's going to be some technical difficulties going on in that game. Yeah, it sounds like we did have a disconnect on side of one of the players, so we will probably be restarting that game. The admins are going to look into it for us, but that was a full reset there happening either way. Both the healers were able to drink to full mana, so no real advantage for either of the sides, obviously. Mana and usually win in the later game. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, it looks like they're saying the same honor talent, so they're trying to just both teams win defensively, win that long game, looking for offensive opportunities to get kills. I'm just not sure if it's really going to happen. Dolgan and Swan getting really offensive right away with that Warbreaker Blade Storm, cleaving this melee DPS apart. Volchok only using the Thorns, he gets put into that stumble. There's the ground at home. If Dolgan kills this, it looks like they don't even go for the trap, but already they forced a lot of pressure. Yeah, the pressure is completely in favor of in, of give it this round. Iros eating that freezing trap. Lisora with a bit of a misaimed trap. That means that Gronks will be open to get aggressive. But what I love that give it do is they push in when they have freezing trap and 
and as soon as they don't have it, they immediately pull away because with the Hunter, they are more favored in the open field, whereas behind the boxes, they are less favored. Iroh caught into a bash, taking a bit of damage here, but no cooldown trades just yet. This is a greedy decision by Gronks. It is also going to cost them a lot more mana to heal through the pressure or Ethereal Farm, which is a much more vital cooldown than Iron Bark. Another freezing trap by Lysora missed, and the pressure might be getting to him. Yeah, they might have they might just be getting into it. It's gonna be harder for him to hit these unless he pushes in and it just feels like he really doesn't want to push in. He doesn't want to give that uh, advantage to Gronks to hit him because he knows exactly what they can do. As soon as they can get him with crowd control to Gozing, they can just completely destroy him. But right now, Nux is the one taking a lot of damage with that kick onto Voltron. He's getting super low. The stun used onto him as well as a sharpened blade. It's going to be hard for him to heal. They need to be a bit careful here, but it looks like Voltron is doing his best. Both these druids, as soon as they're free sit, they're just going to keep their team alive until heavy dampening. Yep, Voltron shadow melding the storm bolt on that crowd control chain and then dodging the trap that's three freezing traps in a row that Lee Sora has not been able to secure and it's putting the momentum of his team behind Volchok taking this opportunity to drink and try and secure a bit of a mana advantage moving into what is likely going to be a late game as this is a bit of a stalemate if Lee Sora pushes forward and fights behind the boxes he will be disadvantaged if Iroh and Nux try to push out to center field and fight they will be disadvantaged so neither team wants to give up their defender's advantage in the best position possible now Iroh seems to be making the push but he's under fire yeah he is under fire they do have that ethereal and the iron bark on a low cooldown though which should be enough to survive for now but heading onto that thing it may not be enough if voltrox unable to heal them through their cc windows and they're actually going to turn their targets onto nux right now getting a lot of pressure forcing that to start onto dolgan he trinkets it he sends his blood in the water they really want to force a defensive cooldown right now stormbolt into fear onto ira and to voltrox they're not trinketing it nux somehow doing an excellent job living i believe he killed that pet in order to get a victory rush to keep him alive so well played by nux they're utilizing his warrior completely give it are getting aggressive pushing forward forcing a lot of defensive cooldowns or at least the trinket from iroh and still keeping up their momentum but leo sora has overextended they're trying to punish this swap to him in that double stun lock but gossing timing some regrowth and able to recover now both teams begin to stabilize. Volchok Ooh. making a move, trying to jump across the map, but getting intercepted oh. by a Stormbolt. Good freezing trap by Lysora, but a triple fear from Nux, looking to reverse the pressure as well. I do believe that Nux will be on the back foot. Lysora activating his powerful Beast of Wrath, dealing a ton of pain. I believe mana is basically tied at this point as we get closer and closer to dampening. It looks like Gronks are trying to get aggressive on Gossing. He's going to duck for cover, jumping downstairs. But they are more than happy to switch targets, catching Lee Sora out of line of sight in the Stormbolt, trying to burst him down heavily with that Ascendance, but he disengages to safety. Gronks are now on the back foot, forced to switch targets to Dolgang as they retreat back to the defensive posture behind the boxes. Grounding Totem for the Freezing Trap, but it gets killed off. Nice timing by Givet as they push forward. Dolgang Swagger is on top of killing these ground in terms of making them completely useless to get those traps onto Volchuk and get some pressure onto Nux or Iron. It looks like Nux could be a better uh, target for them because he doesn't have that immunity from the ethereal form of such a low cooldown. So I like to see this from Give It. Gronks are in a really hard position. They need to find offensive pressure somewhere. Yeah, at this point, Volchuk has a mana lead though. So Gossing is the one that is under pressure to go and find a drink opportunity. Lysora caught into a storm bolt. Gronks trying to punish him here in center field with the Sundering out of it. Stormbolt on Volchok. Iroh moving towards to try and grounding totem, and he does manage to break up that crowd control chain. Nice work by Iroh. Now they can get aggressive. Would have liked to have seen Volchok use that bash onto Gossing rather than Lysora. It was diminishing return there. It's a bit of a mistake by Volchok. He loses a lot of crowd control off the back of that error. Iroh dipping low. They make a swap to Nux, trying to catch Volchok off guard, forcing him to trade out Iron Bark. Now they can switch targets back to Iroh if they need to. The pressure is heavily in favor of Given as Nux dips dangerously low. He ducks for cover downstairs, avoiding the pets for a few seconds, allowing Volchok to recover. But amidst all of that pressure, Gossing was able to sneak away. He's on the side, he's drinking, and that means he gets a lot of his mana back. And great awareness from Gossing throughout this series. Whenever his team gets momentum, going for those drinks, making sure that he can secure a spot for his team in the late game.
Yeah, Give It have had such amazing awareness. They realized Nux leaped in to stop a drink earlier, and then they used that against him to go offensive. But right now, Dolgang taking a lot of pressure, but now Nux caught in that battle stance. He's using that to try and get a kill, but they did force the die by the sword from Dolgang Swag. They land a full hex onto girls, and well played there by Iro to get it. And now they're getting those offensive pressure that they really need to take a win from Give It. Yeah, but they get peeled away by Give It with a disarm and a bash. Nice defensive play by Give It. Despite that drink that Gosling was able to secure, mana is starting to even out. We've just stepped into dampening, which means that the overall healing in this match becomes more and more difficult, which means these burst windows and crowd control moments become much more devastating. And likely the healers will become tapped on mana, which means they can no longer press healing abilities and likely their teammates will die. Iro dipping low, trying to kite back with Volchok, although kiting into a position with no line of sight means they will not be able to bait Lee Sora into a bad position. And right now, Gronks are playing into the hands of Give It. They need to reposition. They're stacked up out in midfield, just taking a ton of damage. Yeah, they do need to position, use those boxes or jumping down to their advantage to avoid a lot of that hunt and pressure. Otherwise, it could be troublesome for them. The storm onto Vulture probably going to get grounded. He actually tried to eat and the grounding came too late. So a full trap onto Vulture, but they don't have too much pressure right now. They're trying to go aggressive onto Ira. He does have the Ethereal and the Iron Bark ready. The problem with Ethereal that I see, Sid, is that every time he uses it, he can't do damage himself. And then they just turn their their targets onto Nugs, and so they keep up with their pressure, but Gronks lose all their pressure when he's in that Ethereal. So that was a big window for Gronks. There was no Iron Bark for Gosling and no Die by the Sword on Dole Gang. They popped Ascendance, and they didn't do anything. That was their entire, that's what they had been playing for, was that moment for some time now, and they didn't get anything done. Oh, that's true. devastating for Gronks. Gosling is sitting down for a drink. This is now putting them heavily behind moving into the late game, and this is looking to be the same as, the oh, Lee Sora caught to the storm, but with no trinkets. Gosling in desperation to recover. Iron Bark denies the kill, but they do have to overlap. Nux now on the back foot, leaping over, getting an intimidating shout, forcing the entire defensive arsenal of Give It. I was starting to count the Gronks out, but suddenly out of nowhere, they have put Lee Sora behind. Both Druids are just they're literally drinking because their lives depend on it. They need so much mana, and it's costing them defensive corners. And right now, Voltruck is the one getting a huge drink once again. They're going to be ahead on mana slightly, but at the same time, dampening is kicking in. So whoever's the aggressor will win this game because soon they just, no matter how much mana you have, your heals won't do anything. Iro and Nux on the back foot, but Voltruck did get a drink to tie his team back into the match. Gronks have a window here at another minute and 40 seconds on that Ascendance of Iro. Basically, that Ascendance has to win the game, or I do not see Gronks walking away with this, and we could be moving to match points. Stormbolt onto Volchok, Freezing Trap secured, Iro caught in a stun lock, and dipping low, decides to trade out Ethereal form throughout this burst window, but that was no aggressive cooldowns committed by Give It. Iro is now in a precarious position. Gossin goes for a drink, Nux denies it. Really good awareness from Nux to Heroic Leap over there, but Iro is still under fire, dampening, ramping up, and Volchok tries to make a game-winning play, Jumping in and bashing up Gossing, denying some heals, but Lee Sora was able to just easily avoid the damage. They switch over to Dole Gang. Iron Bar from Gossing should deny the kill there. Iro is dipping lower and lower. Dampening ramps up. Volchok's caught in crowd control. Gronks are in trouble. Grounding Totem gets killed off, but War Banner will back up the team of Gronks. Well played by Nux. Dolgang Swag has such good reflexes to kill these groundings. He just knows every time he stormballs Voltrox, he's ready to kill it and kills it instantly. I have to commend him for that excellent offensive play. Now full fear on the ghost thing. Dolgang is getting offensive with that avatar, but right now 25% dampening. Both teams are going to struggle to deal with this pressure, and it's going to be about who gets these defensive cooldowns out of the way and is able to land a kill. Bestial Wrath popped by Lee Sora. His damage is amplified at this point, and Gronks are on the run. Nox drinking it out and ducking for cover downstairs, but Lee Sora's Tiger is in hot pursuit. Give it. Need to get a drink, though. Moving into late game. Iroh under fire. Maybe they don't need to if they can just find a kill right here and now. Volchok trying his best to deflect, but he gets counter shot. Iroh preemptively ethereal forms. If that bash was even one second faster, Iroh could easily be in the dirt right now. Stormbolt on Volchok. Lisora goes for the trap, but I think he missed it. Volchok now able to avoid that crowd control. Iroh's Ascendance. This was the Ascendance I was talking about earlier. It has to get a kill, but it's not even doing anything at this point. Iroh's Ascendances have been non-influential throughout this series aside from game one and he's the one on the back foot and likely to die i can't help but feel that gronks need to start making some strategy changes honor talent changes or even a composition change because if give it play a solid defense they're looking impenetrable gronks find themselves in career one game away from winning
Yeah, give it win this. It's definitely an assertion of dominance by the Korean region. I was expecting Gronks to be able to walk through this quite easily, but give it are relentless, even with this composition that a lot of players would consider subpar. They're making it work incredibly well. Amazing cross crowd control early on by them, and Nux is in trouble, blurring on 10% and almost going down in the first 10 seconds of the match, Joe. Yeah, he had to use that Urban Shield time. They got rid of the adaptation as well instantly, and the blur. So great aggression for Give It. I love these offensive plays at the beginning. Dogang swag, just so much swagger indeed, leaping in, immediately fearing off the adaptation and getting defensive cooldowns right away. Give it once again, looking so good. All right, Gossi and Lee Sora are starting to dip down. Nux is doing a lot more pressure on this Demon Hunter, really putting it to him that now that they've stabilized throughout that initial assault. I don't really like these swaps over to Gossi. I would like to just see crowd control on Gossi, burst damage onto the Hunter. But in this position, Volchok is trapped. Nux was far out of position. It had to go quite a distance to dispel that, but he does inevitably get out. That reverse magic and adaptation is a nice combo by Gronks. It allows them to get out of quite a lot of freezing traps, which means they can play a lot more aggressive. You don't normally see the adaptation picked in Arena because it's easy, easily punished. But when you partner with a Demon Hunter, he can kind of back you up in those situations where the team could find an opening. Dolgang Swag is dipping low. Pressure for Gronks in this match is much higher than it has been throughout the series. I love this aggression coming out from Gronks. Nox just all over girls thing with those mana rifts as well. And it looks like it's very hard for Gibbet to kind of survive this pressure with a Demon Hunter on top of them. If the Warrior comes back, then Nux just ends up blade dancing both of them, completely crushing them both. So I love this aggression coming out from Grogs, and I feel like they're going to be favored if they keep up with this strategy. The only thing I'm wondering is if Fitz, what honor talents Fitz is running, because I feel like Thorns is a great town against a warrior if you're dragging him into bad positions. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that you know firsthand. <laughs> so I think that's a bit of a mistake by Fitz. Adaptation procced there by the Intimidating Shout, which means the next Freezing Trap needs to be Reverse Magic, but Nux is pretty far out of position if he's not able to get back there in time. He does. Good awareness by Nux, breaking out of that crowd control. Fitz looking for some defensive Cyclones, trying to slow down the pace of the game. And as you said, that mana rift from Nux is paying its weight in gold right now. Gossing is so low on mana. If Gronks keep up this momentum and mana rifts, they're looking like they're going to take this to a game five. This is true, yeah. Grogs, this is what they were relying on. They knew that if Nux can just keep up with him, make him oom, and stop him from drinking, that they can win this game. But maybe give it can punish them. They need to get more offensive pressure, though, onto Nux and force those defensive cooldowns. But it seems like this composition, the way they're playing it, they have the answers to it. The adaptation, as well as that reverse magic, makes it very difficult for give it to get that crowd control going. And the nice part about the composition that Gronks are bringing, both the Demon Hunter now in Battle for Azeroth has purged which removes heal over time effects and is a very stressful mechanic for a restoration druid to deal with as well as Volchok. So during these burst moments, they can add more purges and remove the advantage that the restoration druid would otherwise have. And in this position, Gronks are dominating. Outside of that initial 10 seconds, they've been in a great position throughout this fight. Dolgang Swag trying to peel back and Nux should be the target. He's very overextended. He's easily punished doing what he is doing. But if he gets away with it long enough, Gosling's going to run out of mana. Yeah, he is, and I feel like they need to punish Nux more for this. They need to rely on doing that, but like I said, if they keep up with him, and Nux is turning down the rest of Drew, and he's just getting so much cleave action, the mana the swap. is doing so much work, and that swap onto Lee Sora forces that aspect of the turtle. It's putting them so far behind, and this looks like a completely different game. Gronk's bringing the DH Boomy Shaman, and they're destroying Gibbet so far. This is, looks like a completely different team. They finally got some spark. They're really getting aggressive and taking it to them, winning on multiple fronts with both crowd control, mana, burst, and momentum. Gronks are looking strong to potentially take this to a game number five. What's Gossing going to do when he runs out of gas is the question. Dolgang Swag is dipping low as well. The spread pressure from Gronks is amazing. Nice intimidating shout here, though, by Dolgang Swag, trying to develop some more pressure towards Fitz, but Fitz tanks him out in bear form. Now jumping back out as Volchok is out of crowd control. Gossing go for a drink. Nux denies it. And it's very important that they prevent Gossing from drinking. At this position, with Gossing out of mana, I'd like to see Volchok start committing more of his mana to purge, as Gossing won't be able to trade it one for one any longer. Yeah, it would be nice to see those purges come up, because look at them now. They're just completely on the back foot. He has the basket if needed. He used the defensive bash onto Nux, and Nux is just making sure he's going to stay on top of Gauss and make sure he doesn't drink, keep his mana low with the mana rift. And it just looks so hard for them to get out of this 
position. I mean, he has absolutely nothing. He uses the bark skin. He has the iron bark of knees, but he gets stunned out of form right now. The annihilation coming in so much burst pressure. The double stun landed as well. I'm not sure how Give It are going to survive this one, Sid. The only thing I think Gronks could improve is running thorns. In this position, Dolgang may just fall anyway. Gosney has no mana left, and Gronks look like a completely different team in game number four. Dolgang swag doing whatever he can, but at this point, how much longer can he keep it up? Fitz secures a full Cyclone with that crowd control removing the healing from the team of Given. Dolgang is likely to go down. He actually survives throughout the full duration Cyclone. Nux moves over. He's going to commit for the long game rather than tunneling into the Warrior. He's going to be split pressuring, trying to force Gossing on the back foot, and Fitz is likely to take down Dol <laughs> Dolgang Swag. Gronks are going to tie it up, taking it to game number five, and this may be for the first time in this tournament that Give It have to change comp. We'll have to find out in the very, very near future, Said. All right, so the large map selection, what Give It are going to be looking to do is separate Nux from Volchok. Nux has to be right beside Volchok to use reverse magic to remove Freezing Trap. This is a big map. They can drag him out of range and deny the usage of it, and that does appear to be the strategy early on as they focused a lot of burst damage onto Nux, and as long as Nux is aware of that and able to bounce back to Volchok when he needs him to break those freezing traps, I think Gronks will take it. But if Nux isn't careful and overextends, that's going to be an opportunity for Give It to punish. Yeah, for once it feels like Give It are the ones that need to be the aggressors rather than out to fight. They need to find kill opportunities onto Nux, but once we saw just now the reverse magic coming out, completely negating that freezing trap, which buys Gronks momentum to push in onto Gaozing, get those mana rifts, and get a lot of cleave pressure onto them. Dolgang Swag now taking the brunt of this exchange as Gossing is locked down in crowd control, but Nux is falling behind, forced to trade out the blur, and Nux is the most vulnerable target. It's a great map pick from Give It, despite wanting to not change compositions. Their strategy is looking to be quite strong. Gossing on the back foot. Gronks are playing a lot more cheeky, trying to gun down the healer. Doesn't seem like they've been able to secure a lot of mana rifts just yet, as Volchok is actually the one falling behind on mana. Yeah, he's falling out behind on mana, but at the same time, give it falling behind on HP. The Bark King comes out, Dolgang's back very low as well. They need to be careful. He's got a lot of work to get some healing done. They use an Intimidation Stun onto Nux there, a bit defensively, buying Gozing some time to get those heals up. A nice Cyclone onto Dolgang's back though from Fitz, and Fitz is just all over them. Oh, he actually walks into a Freezing Trap right there, popping the adaptation, using the Urban Shield term now as well to negate some damage onto Nux. There's a lot of pressure right now in favor of Gronks. These Cyclones from Fitz have been absolutely devastating, oh. putting Gossing immensely behind in terms of getting these heal over time effects going. Now cycling up the Beast of Wrath, Fitz is on fire. I'm so happy they substituted him in for the rest of this series because he's been hard carrying the Gronks, looking to advance to the Grand Finals. Momentum, mana, cooldowns, health, everything in favor of Gronks as they are trying to assert dominance. Nux in a great position for that reverse magic. Needs to be a bit careful as there is some pressure finally starting to swing in favor of Give It. Nux jumps over, looking to secure that mana rift, the purple circle, burning down the mana of Gossing, pushing their lead even further. This is looking so one-sided for Gronks. They just need to make sure Nux doesn't die. If that doesn't happen, then they're just going to win this game, surely. And it's been going so well for them. Gossing using that thorn, so as well, maybe trying to counter pressure onto Nux a little bit, but he's just away from the Warriors, so he's not going to take too much pressure. The adaptation being procked, a full bash onto Nux, a stun onto Voltric. This is what they want to get the pressure. He doesn't have the reverse magic for now, so if they can get a trap onto Volchok and connect onto Nux, that's their only kill opportunity, but time is ticking. Cyclone secured as Gronks look to advance. Dolgang Swag dangerously oh. low. A hex by Volchok is oh. going to get them the series. Gronks advance. Feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.